Praise God. Aisha, how you doing, sis? How you doing? Bless you. You just wrote me on Facebook. God bless you, Tashina. Good evening. Bless you. I'm doing great. I missed you all too. Maya, how you doing? Love you, sis. Melissa, how you doing? Leah. Good morning, Hugo. How you doing? Sweetly sending. Long live Ray. God bless you. I know I wasn't on yesterday. I'm not going to be on as much. God bless you, Maya. Alicia, how you doing? Miss Courtney. Get on and say your highs. Let me know how you guys have been. For those of you who are on the prayer, um, day before yesterday, let me know how you feel. I know someone who watched the replay. She said that she watched the replay of that prayers that we did. The ones that I had you guys touch your navel with the anointing oil or with the water. And she said that as she was doing it, she smelt cigarette. It was a, it was a, a strong stench of like nicotine or, you know, if you smoke that smell. And I asked her, I, and she said that, that she didn't smoke. And she, she said that she, she smelt it. It was so thick that she wanted to throw up, you know. So you know that it wasn't just one of those things or, co or coincidence. And I asked her, th th does her mother smoke? Or does uh, her grandmother smoke? Or anyone in her, her family smoke? And she said, yeah, her grandmother smoked. Her mother smoked. And, um, and two of her sisters inherited as well. You know, but as she prayed that prayer and we broke everything that was passed down in our bloodline through our navel she received deliverance from that because you know um the devil even though she doesn't smoke yet the devil would have eventually got her in the habit of smoking but as soon as she touched her navel she smelt that smell that that stench that was a manifestation of the spirit and that was it being released and she was set free so she was set free from smoking and she didn't even smoke yet <laughs> glory to the most high god she never smoked a day in her life, but got set her free from that bondage before the devil got the opportunity to let it be manifest in her life. Oh my God, the Holy Spirit just told me to release that word. I'm going to release that word to you. I said, any addiction, any bondage, any sin that the devil has planned to have you in, I said, be set free from it even before even before it gets manifested in the name of, even before you see the effect in the physical realm, everything that's been planned in the spirit, waiting for you to fall into before you see the effect in the physical, let it manifest and leave in Jesus' name. Be set free. He who the Son has set free shall be free indeed. We thank God. I thank God for all your testimonies that you guys are sending me. Um... I thank God for what he's doing in all our lives. Just do me a favor. If, if you're just getting on and you haven't shared this, share with your with your followers, share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook, and share it on Periscope. If you have an iOS device, if you have an Apple device, you swipe to the right. Yeah. If you have an Android, you swipe up to down. You need to watch the replay. It's already gone. I'm sorry. It's already gone. Thank you for sharing. And I, I want to talk about this, um, finding rest and refreshment in the Lord. Thank you guys for sharing, all of you. Finding rest and refreshment in the Lord. I believe that this is something that, you know, a lot of believers don't really do. Um, we let trials and tribulations and problems of, and cares of this world. No, we're just getting started. So let's get on and share. Um, and for those of you who are going to be watching the replay, if you find out that you get my notification late or you don't or you, or you don't get it all, it may be best if you unfollow me then refollow me. A lot of a lot of time that that happens. I don't know why. But I'm, I'm speaking about finding refreshment and rest in the Lord. Let me know if you can hear me, if you can see me, if everything's working. Before I start, we thank God. 
Yes. Awesome. If it's your first time, let me know as well. I pray you'll be blessed as we talk about this. Glory to the Most High God. Le puro setiki viliam zoto opavi shindi supo ufaron takapa vali siti bihupure fitayaba. Salama vi hu sentiki saba ruposufulivi. Thank you for paying for my trip list. Now they're asleep train. Mostly f- go to God. I'm happy that they that they get a rest, the rest that they deserve as little children. God bless you, sir. How you doing? Um and um I just wanted to share this as well. Before I go to my teaching, I'm gonna be releasing a blog really soon on my website. Um for those who are struggling with homosexuality, those who are struggling with perverse thoughts, you know. F- from the opposite sex and i'm going to release a, a, a blog on it it's going to be it's not just going to be a regular blog it's going to be a blog and um s- sort of like a manual on what to do because a few people have come to me concerning that issue and i believe the holy spirit is leading me is leading me you know to take care of that in, in that way as well for everyone and for those who never know me you know it's going to be called i'm a i'm a christian but i'm gay glory to the most high god and I believe people are gonna uh, are gonna be blessed by it. So just pray for me as I take care of that. Also, I'm gonna be ministering in my um in my church this Sunday, 10 a.m. So if you're in the area, you wanna stop by. If you want, if you're in the area, and you wanna stop by, come through. You know, but a lot of a lot of people who are in church they struggle with it and they like to and, and they hide it. You know, and I do I do I, I I do imagine people going to home and typing. You know. On Google, I'm a Christian, but I'm gay. What do I do? You know, so there's a lot, a lot of lack of knowledge in the area. So it's good. It's good for those who are who are looking for a way out to find to find. Because a lot of times we bash people, we bash people for being homosexual, but we don't offer a solution. But there is a solution. Go to the most like get off and unblock her. You might have to get off and unblock. I think she's still on though. You know, so it's not enough to just bash people for what they are, you know, offer a solution. And that's why we must be well trained and receive revelation and know how to operate in the spirit and know how to receive from God on how to take care of certain things. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Yeah, this year is right there. God bless you, Glenda. Um, so I'll be ministering in my church this Sunday in the New Jersey area, North of New Jersey. If, if, if you go to my Facebook, you'll see the information there. And my certain and my sermon title is Born to War. Spiritual warfare. Born to war. Amen. I believe God is raising warriors. He's re- he's re- he's raising Davids in our generation. He's raising Joshua's or the most high God. He's raising people who are who will not only just sit there and be and be attacked by the devil, but take the fight to the gates of hell. Our church, you know, the um Christianity, God's church is built on warfare. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So it's a war. Glory to the most high God. And if you're a Christian, you're in a warfare, whether you choose to believe it or not, or you choose to be passive. And if you're reformed, if you're a, a, a contemporary Christian, a Lutheran, a Baptist, a Pentecostal, a Charismatic, you know, it doesn't matter what you are. You know, you are in a spiritual warfare. Glory to God. So I'm going to be speaking on that. Yes, I will have my my little cousin Periscope in the service as well for those of you who would want to watch it. So I wanted to get on here and, and, and share about refreshment. There's something that I, I heard about today that I wanted to get on his show as it blessed me. I want to bless you with it. Um, being refreshed in the Lord. A lot of times as believers, we go through life and we expect our refreshment to just come on Sundays. And unfortunately, a lot of us don't even attend churches that operate in the glory of God. So we get in church angry, upset, bitter, hurt, mad. And we leave church worse. You know, people leave church gossiping. You know, there's, there's fights in the parking lot. You got 
the church mothers mad at each other. You know, all the youths backbiting and, and everyone is, everyone is, you know, all that stuff. Why? Because we're not, we haven't learned the habit of being refreshed in the Lord. We haven't learned that we expect to go to church on Sunday and our pastor to, to you know, to, oh, I'm going to go to church on Sunday, one day, one day of a week, and I'm just going to be refreshed and filled up. You know, the church is not, is not a service station. You don't just go there every Sunday to be filled up. And, 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 and you don't do nothing for the rest of the week. And you wonder why you're mad. You wonder why you got anger issues. You know, you wonder why you're bitter and you're resentful and you're, and, and you're hateful and you're spiteful and you're always angry. Or you speak in tongues, but you're always mad. Glory to the most high God. You know, so you, we wonder why we go through these things. Why? Because a lot of us are not being refreshed in the Lord. Glory to God. We're not being refreshed in the Lord. And I'm going to speak about ways that we receive refreshment and maintain our refreshment and, 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 and our refreshment and rest in Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. We receive our refreshment and rest in Jesus. So I'm going to speak. I'm, I'm going to start with this. Um, the most popular verse on rest. Well, I believe it is. And the Bible says, and this is Jesus, he said, come unto me, all you who, who are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy, and I will give you rest. This is Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 29. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lonely heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. So what is the remedy of if if see, if you're always tired, if you're always angry, you're always bitter, you're always anxious, you know you always got something going on. You're never happy. You're always moody. What is what is the remedy? What is I come across too many believers, man. You guys, it's like it's like you know. Sometimes when when if if it wasn't by the grace of God, sometimes by the time I you guys finish talking, I get depressed. And it's like, you know, is, is it always bad? <laughs> Don't you have a good day once in a while? You know, can't you wake up and say, you know, God has been good to me this day. There's always, you know, always something going on. Something's wrong. I'm all more crying and, and bitter and, and, and angry, you know, you know, because you don't have no rest. It's always something wrong with you. <laughs> and, and that's not how it should be in the name of Jesus. So Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. See, that's the issue. He said, take my yoke upon me and learn. It's not, a just, it's not just about calling yourself a Christian. It's about taking the yoke of Christ upon you, one, and learning of him, two. These are the two components. These are the two components that key into receiving restoration and rest. One, taking the yoke. What does it mean to take the yoke of Christ upon his neck, upon your neck? First of all, we would have to look at what exactly is a yoke. A yoke is something that was, if I can find the picture, I'll show it to you. For those of you who don't know, a yoke is something that was put on the, on the neck of animals. It was put on the neck of animals as they plowed. I'm going to show you an image of it and how it looks. This is, these are, these are examples of yokes. Amen. So if you can see what it is. And Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you. Isn't it contradicting? It's almost, it's, it almost seems contradicting when the Bible says where the spirit of Christ is, there is liberty. And here you have Jesus telling me, take, a, take my yoke upon you. I mean, when I look at this, there's nothing that, that's, that, that screams freedom or liberty. It looks like you're in more bondage. And that's what a lot of believers believe. A lot of believers believe, amen. That's what a lot of Christians believe. You know, when you have the yoke of Christ, see, who are you yoked to? You're yoked to Jesus. As you see in the picture, it's two animals. It's always two animals. That are yoked together. You're yoked to Jesus. You're yoked to the Holy Ghost. And what do I mean? There are certain things that you used to do when you were unsaved. 
But when you want to turn your neck and go that way, that yoke of Christ is on your neck and it's not, it won't let you budge. It won't let you move. When you want to do something, that yoke is on your neck and it's saying, uh-uh, you can't do that. You're saved. We don't do that in holiness. Glory to the Most High God. That is having the yoke. It's, it, it's restrictment. But you see, even though, even though this yoke seems to be restricting, it's actually giving us freedom and rest. Because those things that people in the world would do and believe that they're free, oh, I'm free, I'm smoking, I'm drinking, I'm having sex, I'm living a good life, they're actually putting themselves in bondage. See, they have a yoke on their neck. You can't be you can't live on this earth without a yoke on your neck. And it's either that you have the yoke of Jesus or the yoke of demons. And these people, you know, they go out doing whatever they want to because they say, oh, it's too much legalism in the church. I can't be a Christian because I can't do this because I'm a Christian. I can't do that when I'm a Christian. You know, I've had believe, I've heard believers ask, you know, can I disagree with certain parts of the Bible because I want to do this? No, you can't do that. That's the point. That's what the Bible gives you. It gives you a yoke. It gives you a yoke. He said, my yoke is light. It gives you, it gives you, there's certain things you just don't do. There's certain places you just don't go. There's certain things you just don't say because you're saved. It's not a coincidence. It's you having the yoke of Christ on your neck. But if you, if you paraventure used to go there or do those things, you would know that you were just putting yourself in bondage, in demonic bondage. So you receiving that yoke on your neck and it restricting you from doing certain things is actually you receiving freedom from Christ or through Christ, should I say. You're receiving freedom through Christ. But his yoke is light. See, if you're walking in the spirit, you, you notice that his yoke is light. You don't even notice it there. You know, and, 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 and see, if you're legalistic and you're, and you're pharisaical, if you're always in the flesh, then you're the person who's always like, oh my God, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do that, I can't do that. But if you're walking in the spirit, you don't even think about those things. You know, they don't come to your mind. It's natural. Or should I say it's supernatural? So in order to receive rest, number one, you put the yoke of Christ. See, it's not it's not a form of legalism. It's not people making you not do what you want to do. It's not people making you do what you don't want to do. If you have those desires, you ask God to take the desires away. But it's about you. It's about you receiving the yoke of Christ on your neck so he can lead you and guide you and restrain you to keep you straight. No man puts his hand to the plow and looks back. It's fit for the kingdom. You're on the plow, you're yoked with the Holy Spirit, and you're moving. Glory to God. You're moving. And, and, and what's the second part? And learn of me. Amen. And this, see, and this, you see, and now, here's the thing about it. We have some believers who take the yoke of Christ upon their neck. You know, they don't sin. They, they, they hope that they're holy. They're elders in the church. They're this and that in the church. But they've stopped learning. And you see them when they get old, they get bitter. And they start fighting for positions in the church. You know, and, and there's gossip in the house of God. There's backbiting and slander. Why? Because they've come to the place where they're not learning of Christ anymore. Revelation is progressive in the sense that you can never get enough of it. Revelation is progressive in the sense that you can visit the same topic every single day for the rest of your life and learn something new every time you visit it. There's never a position, there's never a level, there's never, you know, a title you get to in Christ where you stop learning of him. The moment you stop learning of him is the moment you put yourself up for torment and you stop receiving rest. Stop receiving rest. Glory to God. You know, and, 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 and so you must be careful that you that you never get to the place where you believe you're so full, you know everything, you're so perfect, and you can't learn from Christ. I was talking to a sister on Facebook concerning those who get on the periscope and they fall asleep. 
And I knew this, and she told me this actually. And she said, "Oh, I was reading about it, and you know, and the and, and they said people who who usually fall asleep like that, it's a Leviathan spirit." And I said, "Yeah, it's a spirit of pride. It's a spirit of Leviathan, because you believe for some, even though you may not be conscious of it, but something inside you believes that you don't really need to. It's, it's stopping you from receiving revelation. You know, it's something in you that believes that you don't really need it." And that's why you see people come to church, the, they will sleep from, you know, the beginning of the sermon to the end of the sermon. I know we, I know you've done it before, you know, you sleep from the beginning of the sermon to the end of the sermon. The moment that the preacher gets off, all of a sudden, you, you have all this energy. You have all this strength. You said, my God, I was just, I was just tired when he was preaching. Why is it that now I have all this strength? That's a Leviathan spirit. That's a spirit of pride. And you, if, you, if, you, if you struggle with that, you know, you must confront it in prayer and get deliverance from it. Because it seeks to stop you from receiving revelation. I know those of you, you were probably already sleepy. Well, as soon as I started talking, I bet you woke now. You know, I bet you awake. Glory to the most I got. That's a Leviathan. If it's consistent, or it's, if it's consistent, it's a Leviathan spirit. You know, it's a spirit of pride. It's a spirit that you believe that you don't need revelation. It's a spirit that makes you believe, well, I can go to church and not learn anything. I just go and sleep through a sermon or do whatever I want to do, you know, and, and I'm good. And as soon as the sermon's over, I'm wide awake. You know, I, I've been there before, and I've been dead tired as soon as the pastor's preaching. And then as soon as he gets off the podium, I'm it's like a new level of strength in me. Glory to God. And I, I, that's not good. It's Leviathan Demon Song. You know, so you have to learn of him. Learn of him. You take his yoke upon him and you learn of him. And he says, For I am meek and lowly in heart. Glory to God. And you must understand it. It's not a coincidence that he said that. He is meek and lonely in heart. One thing about a yoke is, I'm going to show you the picture again. I need you to understand this. I need you to understand why he said this. Why he, understood, why he said, I am meek of lonely and lowly of heart. Because when two animals are on a yoke, when two animals are on a yoke and they're not the same size or the same height, they can't, they can't plow the field successfully. One will always be drawing one back and one will always be pulling one forward. Glory to God. So, so it, takes, it takes humility for you to even take on the yoke of Christ. It takes humility. Because it's, if he's meek and lonely and lowly of heart, then you have to be too. If you two are going to share the same yoke, if you're going to walk with him, if you're going to learn from him, you got to be meek. You have to be humble. You have to be lowly of, of heart. Glory to God. So that's the first way. You know, give yourself to Jesus. Those things that you think that, that, that oh, you know, I don't have to stop doing it because I'm a, uh, um, even though I'm a Christian, all these saints, you got to, people say, you know, people say that, oh, you're too deep. It doesn't take all that. You know, you guys are over there fasting and, you know, fasting and all that, you know, and praying in tongues. It don't take, you know, people who talk like that, and if you're one of them, this is a rebuke. You know, if you're one of those people who believe that you can do things without the Holy Ghost and you don't need to pray in tongues, and oh, it's not for everybody. I don't got to pray in the Holy Ghost or you're fasting. It's not, it's not by works. I don't, these are people who are afraid to take on the yoke of Christ because there's no, there's no way that you can be a Christian and you're telling me that you don't need the Holy Spirit. That's like saying, I don't need the full power of the Holy Spirit to exist or to do the will of God because I can do it in flesh. So I don't need to speak in tongues. No, 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 no. I don't need to speak in tongues. I don't need. I, I don't need to to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't need to flow in the gifts. I'll leave that for my pastor and my bishop and my apostle. I don't need that. It doesn't take all that. Y'all too deep. I don't need to walk holy. I don't need to. You know, these are people. He has pride. That's arrogance. That's pride. That's arrogance. And that's the inner. And that's the. And that's you believing that you don't need God. And you could do everything in your flesh. If you think you're doing every, everything in your flesh, you're deceived. You're deceived. God bless you, Steve. If, if, if you're receiving a bad connection, it may be from your end, I believe. You know, okay. Glory to God.
you know, it, it's deception. And these are all doctrines of the devil. So what's another way? What's another way? Go to God. I'm going to read from you 1 Corinthians chapter 16. And this is Paul. 1 Corinthians 16, 16, 16, 17. And it says, I am glad of the coming of Stephanus and Fortunatus and Achicus. Sorry, I can't do these names. Glory to God. <laughs> for that it was lacking, for which was lacking on your part, they have supplied. For they have refreshed my spirit and yours, therefore acknowledge them that are such. Paul, Paul was acknowledging these three people because they refreshed his spirit. Glory to God. You know, God is going to refresh his spirit, but there are people who refresh his spirit as well. And that's why the worst thing you can do it as a believer is be around people who are constantly, it's always something wrong with them. They're always gossiping and backbiting. They're, they're always angry and mad. You know, they're always slandering and talking bad about someone. They're always, you know, it's some people you, 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 you just get around them and you just being around them drains you. You just having a conversation with them drains you. If you're always around such people, if you're the one, you know, and that's what God told me. And that's what God told me. You know, I was at a point where I was getting caught up in all the mess. And God told me, look, get away from all that. And, 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 and get away from the pettiness and the messiness and the gossiping and the backbiting and the back people texting you. Oh, you know what this person said. They, they calling you 24 hours. They're on the phone with you about the same problem. You know, they're gossiping and slandering. They're backbiting. You know, now if it's someone who, who, who you're close with. If it's someone who you're counseling and you know the relation that you have with them, that's a different story. But if people who just, all, that's all they ever do, you know, there is always something wrong with them. And they're always talking to you. You're always texting them. You know, and, and you, you being around them drains you. You wonder why you go to church. You know, you get you feel so good and you go to work the next day. You got all these people around you doing all these things and you feel drained. Because there are people... That are like vampires. They, 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 they suck the virtue right out of you. And that's why Jesus, he would, he would, he would seclude himself to certain, you know, to a mountain and pray on his own so that he can receive virtue. So in order to receive rest, who's around you? Who's speaking into your life? Who's your best friend? Who are your friends? Who are your buddies? Even so-called ministers. You know, you ought to be careful of these people. Because they will just suck you dry. And they will leave you with nothing. They'll leave you with nothing. But Paul said, look. He said, for they have refreshed my spirit. Get around people who are anointed. And even if, you, even if you're going through something bad. If you get around someone who's anointed. Someone who's, who's joyful in the Lord. Someone who has a personal relationship with Christ. Even without them counseling you. Or talking to you. You notice that you just being around them. And you don't even share your problem. You just being around them. It'll bring a new level of strength to your, to your body. Glory to God. They seem to be in Jersey. Amen. You know, so find people around you. You know, don't, 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 don't force it. Let the Holy Spirit lead you to people who will, who, 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 will, who will refresh your spirit. And if you're a minister of the gospel, if you're constantly, you know, pouring into others, you must, you can't have people around you on a daily basis, on daily basis or a consistent basis who are draining you. And that's why if you're going to be a minister and you're not married, you got to make sure you, you marry someone. Who, who, you know, it's good to be deep, you know, but, but, but you can't just marry someone who's, who's so good in ministry. But when you get home, it's going to be an issue because they're going to drain you because you can pray and fast 24-7. And then you, and you be in a house with someone who's annoying and nagging and they'll drain you. And right before you got to minister and you, you won't have anything to minister to people with. You won't have anything to give the people, you know, so be careful of those around you. Find people who will refresh Yes, and if you please, if you find people who refresh your spirit, don't don't pull them down now. Glory to God. Don't pull them down. You know, sometimes you talk to people about your mess, 
and it's like you know, and, 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 you know, there's certain people who who are not who are not who, who I don't know how to say this. It's certain people who are just not meant to carry your burden. It's not even one who you can tell what you're going through. You know, there's certain men and women of God who 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 have who have filled themselves up. So even when you even when you bother them, it doesn't affect them as much because they've been filled up. With the power of God and, and because of the relationship with Christ. But you can't go to someone who's just there. Someone's a regular Christian and you just keep bugging them out. And you expect them, you know, they're on the same, they're on the same level as you. And the same predicament as you. And you're bugging them out. And you're looking for a word and refreshment. And they're coming to you and they're looking for a word and refreshment. And you're like, come on, brother. I thought you had a word for me. You know, glory to God. So find people, find people who refresh you. Find people who will refresh you. But you can only refresh people. You can only help restore people and to refill people when you're filled. And that's what I'm going to get into. So if you're around, if you happen to be forced to be around people like that, that's why you can't just resort to Sunday. In my country, you know, we call this Sunday, Sunday medicine. You know, there's a medicine that you take only once a week and it'll keep you safe from a certain thing. You can't let church be Sunday, Sunday medicine. You know, you, you can't let your relationship with God be Sunday, Sunday medicine. Amen. You can't. You have to be consistently walking in the Spirit and filled with God. Filled with the Spirit. Do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit of God. Be filled. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Glory to the Most High God. And how do you get filled with the Holy Spirit? How do you, how do you let the minister? How, how do you let the Holy Spirit minister to you? How do you be? How do you? How do you steward the anointing? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Sometimes people just mad. I said, Look, man, hang up the phone and go pray in the Holy Ghost. <coughs> I told my sister that when she was on the phone. I don't she's still on, but she called me today and she was upset about something. I said, Look, just go pray in the Holy Ghost. You know, it, might, it may sound deep. But sometimes all you, you just need to get away from the feelings and get in the spirit. Get away from the f flesh and, and go pray in tongues. Edify yourself. Be refreshed. Get out your emotions and your feelings and what people said to you and what people did to you and, and how it hurt you. you know, and go pray in the Holy Ghost. So, so that you can be filled. So that you can be filled. Glory to the Most High God. So that you can be filled. Yeah, I'm referring to praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. You know, praying in tongues. A lot of people think that the Holy Ghost, I just pray in tongues. I prayed in tongues that one time, man. You know, when I got filled. But I got filled. And since then, you never prayed in it again. That's not, you know, tongues is not there for you. I, I've come across people who brag, you know, because, oh, my tongue just sounds so good. You know, oh, I pray in the Holy Ghost. I'm deep. It's not for you to sound deeper than nobody. It's not for you to th think you're better than than anybody. You know, it, it's for you to, to con you constantly pray in it, constantly edify yourself and build yourself up. And now you're able to pour into others. Paul, listen, Paul said, Paul see. When Paul got saved, he went into the Arabian desert for three years. And I believe that was where he fasted and prayed in the Holy Ghost. He told, he, he said, I thank God that I pray in tongues more than all of you. And, and if you notice, Paul wrote one third of the, of the, of the New Testament. I'm going to call me. Lord, I pray. That you baptize me in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of tongues. I give my body to you, Holy Spirit. I give my mind to you, Holy Spirit. I pray against any doubts, any unbelief. Any Leviathan or pride or any form of hindrance 
to me receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues. Jesus, I pray for the grace to yield my tongue and to get out of my own head that I may walk in the Spirit and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. That's a simple prayer. All you have to pray, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pray for you guys. Lord, I pray for a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you baptize them in your presence. Even those who have asked of you, I pray that they begin to speak in new tongues. For you said you shall pour your spirit upon our flesh. Lord, you said out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. I pray and I say let rivers of living water begin to flow out of their belly. If you pray in the Holy Ghost, I want you to pray in the Holy Ghost. If you don't, I just want you to I just want you to um close your eyes and begin to call on Jesus. Lord, I pray that as they call upon your name, that they begin to speak in tongues. I pray for those who even already speak in the Holy Ghost, that as they call upon your name and as they pray in tongues, that there be a shifting, that there be an, an elevation, that there be a fresh outpouring and a fresh filling of your precious spirit in the name of Jesus, a fresh impartation and a fresh fire. For you said you would do something new in our midst. I pray you do something new in our midst in the name of Jesus. Mara shatu kupu vuli visiti apalava. Masidu rembe inkatu posopo. Helivura epeva la zabala. Masu tu rembe tinka tavazu. Mithi tu supa repe vi tu shalava thiki tu sepe. Madindu rimba dimo zukutu. And he says, here I am, and I pour up my spirit upon you. And even at this moment, even from this day, you begin to receive even a greater filling and a greater glory. And even a greater filling and a greater glory. He said, I begin to strengthen your vessel that you may be able to contain more of me, that you may be able to contain more of my presence that you may be able to, to contain more of my anointing and my power. And even as you shall contain more of me, that it'll be able, that you'll be able to pour into others more that you have. He says, get ready for I stretch you. I see a rubber band in the spirit. He says, I'm going to stretch you to the point that you think that you're going to break. He said, I'm going to stretch you to the point that you think that you're going to break. He said, I'm going to fill you with so much of me that you think that you're going to break. He said, I'm going to fill you with so much of my glory and my presence that is going to weigh you down and it's going to and it's going to and greater it's going to be greater in you than he that is in the world he says because i will be inside of you and i stretch you i stretch your gifts i stretch your limitations i break the boundaries i break the obstacles i break them i break them i break them i break them lo posso pur repetir I see a restoration, I see a renewal, I see a replacement from old wineskin. For you cannot pour new wine into old wineskin. He said, for so many of you, you've been wanting for a fresh filling, but you've been in your own wine. You've had your old wineskin on. He says, I, 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 ref I, res I replace it. Yes, a replacement, a replacement, a replacement. He said, for so many of you, now you're going to notice that when you get in a prayer, it's going to be deeper. And when you get in a worship, it's going to be deeper. When you get into intercession, it's going to be deeper. I stretch you. He said, there are some things that may have been too deep for you before, but I begin to lead you to those things. I stretch you, I stretch you even into prophecy. I stretch you even into deliverance. I stretch you even into healing. I stretch you even into healings, even into miracles. I stretch you even into prophetical worship. He said, I stretch you. Lord, I thank you for your filling. I thank you for a refreshment. I thank you for new strength. I thank you for your presence.
I thank you for your power. I thank you for your glory, the weight of your glory. I pray that it fall upon each and every one of us. The weight of your presence. I pray that it fall upon each and every single one of us. In the name of Jesus. Rosudu kupu zifiti basufiniyama. Maribidito sukuti boribidita naman supalavaya. I thank you, Jesus. Let me know how you feel. Let me know what happened. And for those of you I prayed for, just as, as you get off, just worship God. And remember to email me testimonies, good news. What's the good news? Remember to e- e- email me testimonies on my, on my email. Just let me know if you feel refreshed and you feel a new sense of power on you. If you feel strengthened, even in the physical. You receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Did you speak in tongues? You, you, so you spoke in tongues right now. Glory to God. We thank Jesus. You spoke in tongues. La para. So I want you to, Israel, I want you to keep speaking in tongues. Don't stop. As soon as you get off, keep speaking in it. Kuposo ralevito sabavala hikotuba sevi. La rebedu semuku vusuto para apalava. Keep speaking it. Don't stop. As Israel, as soon as you get off, keep speaking in the Holy Ghost. And you're going to feel a shift in the spirit. You're going to feel a, it's, it's going to feel like a, it's a birth, a breaking through. The power guys going to fall upon you so strong. Masara padu pelifi tuba. Lord, I thank you for the weight of your glory. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your power. I thank you for your anointing. I thank you for the baptism of the Spirit. I thank you. Shataba suto para palo puzo futubo. Masaru budu bazi puto lemevi. Salabadiku shudima ansu pavali rupa li pazi fitunime. Ah. Be lifted high, Jesus. Be exalted. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your filling, for your refreshment. We say glory to you, Most High. We say be lifted. We say be lifted. We say be lifted. La pasu po revedipa. Rushidipu zifite kipu sinti ipa. And Lord, I pray for all, everyone else who desires, everyone else who wants. I pray that you fill them in the name of Jesus. I pray that you fill them. I pray that even as they even as they get off the periscope, and as they get into personal prayer, and as they get into personal worship, that they speak in tongues, that they pray in the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus, that you fill even those. Even those, Lord, the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Lord, let rivers of living water begin to burst forth out of his belly. I said new utterance, new inspiration, but even begin to prophesy. Begin to prophesy. Let your power fall upon them. Let your glory fall upon each and every one of them. Let the weight of your presence, the weight of your kabah, Sure, but you see, it doesn't have to be spooky. It doesn't have to be too deep or too much. It doesn't have to be weird. But you just, all you need is a desire and a faith and a hunger for it. Lord, fill all of them. Even those who are ready for Even those who speak in tongues and they're not filled. Fill them. Refresh them. Renew them. Empower them. Let out of their belly flow rivers of living water. Let out of their belly flow rivers of living water. Let out of their belly flow rivers of living water. In the name of Jesus. Supura be diffuse. Sura mene vindi kuse fiotore enta. Mara be vitu sole be rimba zopebe. Rotiti zod la barabadimu kuva solebe. Shara be vitu santa kapa vitu sepe. Lord of the Most High God. I thank you. My Rebbe Levi. So as you get off, as I get off, um, just keep praying in the Holy Ghost. 
keep worshiping God. Just get into worship. Don't stop praying. Israel, I'm about to get up, but don't stop praying and get, don't stop praying. You may begin to start weeping. You may begin to, you may fall down and begin to weep uncontrollably. You may begin to roll. Amen. You, you just, the weight of his glory is going to fall on you as you continue to pray in the Holy Ghost. And as you continue to get a new feeling. And you're also receiving deliverance as well. Sometimes the baptism of the Holy Spirit, all the time it comes with deliverance and freedom. Deliverance and freedom. <coughs> I thank you, Jesus. So I'm about to get off, guys. Um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'm not going to be on. I want to get as filled with the power of God as, as much as I humanly can. As much as my as much as my mortal body can get filled. And man, I want to I wanna consecrate myself those three days. So, so don't expect me on those three days. Um, I'll be on on Sunday. I'm going to broadcast the... Uh, I'm going to broadcast the sermon on Sunday morning on Periscope as well. So keep me in prayers. Reach out to me in, e in emails with testimony and prayer requests as well. Are we fasting Monday? No. When I fast on Monday, we are fasting the second week of every month. So our next fast, our next three-day fast is going to be... Let me get my calendar. I'm located in the United States, in New Jersey to be specific. Our next um, fasting is going to be on the 8th of February, 8th, 9th, and 10th. So you can put that in your calendar, prepare yourself, begin to write down your prayer list, begin to, to um, <laughs> I love you too, Israel. I love you too, son. Amen. The love of God is flowing through you. We thank Jesus. Um, so kick it ready. I want all of you to be on the fast. Am I going to open a church? <laughs> well, my father has a church. I think he did that for me, man. So I don't need to open a church. But when in due season, if God has called me to the pastoral ministry, I will be doing the pastoral ministry. But I'm already active in his ministry. I already, so I'm not really, I'm not too, I'm not too fixed on opening a church. Amen. My dad did that. Uh, if anything, I'll be traveling more. A web church. Periscope is my web church. Amen. <laughs> you guys are on my web church. 8th, 9th of 10th of February. Yeah. Amen. I don't want to put too much on my plate right now. But I know God. It's possible, you know. But I'll let the Holy Spirit lead me. And guide me. You want to ask God? Don't ask God about it. Just pray in tongues. Glory to God. As you pray in the Holy Ghost, you know, he's going to he's, he's gonna be awesome. Pay them tithes, people. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> so I'll see you guys on Sunday. I love you all. Um, Reach out to me with prayer requests. Even if I don't reply. Even if I don't reply, I'll, I'm still praying for you guys. So email me your testimonies. Um... And what's going on? Keep me updated. And I'll see you in two in, a, in four days. Be blessed. And pray for me. It's about to snow over here. I don't like snow. So Jesus be a shovel. But I'll see you guys in a few days. And um, may the Lord be with you. Amen. Nobody else snowing.